With that in mind, what is your interpretation of a responsive form of government? How will you make it part of your administration? And what processes will you use to address and prioritize tribal members' concerns? And this first question will go to candidate Lopez. One of the uh, more and more key uh, to this, uh, this is the people themselves and the communication uh, and the understanding of uh, where our administration is going to come from and where, where it is headed. Uh, for years we've been talking about a lot of issues that are, uh, have been raised with the needs of the often raised with the needs of, the, of our children. But uh, lately those needs have been, uh, been uh, not, not fully addressed to some degree. But, I, but our administration feels that uh, with, the, with the right people in there, with the right uh, uh, management, with the evaluation of those programs, with the revitalization of those, from those programs, and hearing, uh, hearing the people's concerns, which I mentioned before is the key to any kind of communication or any success to making, uh, making any government work. And uh, knowing what the government's doing themselves is also a key issue to to uh, allow the people to know what's, what kind of services are there, uh, who the uh, employees are, who the directors are, who the managers, supervisors, and the list goes on. Uh, as today, those kinds of information isn't uh, streamlined out to the communities. So there is a lot of information, there is still a lot of, uh, of, uh, of human communication, direct communication to to the communities, uh, to the author themselves, who do, make, who do not make it to the community meetings, only those who, who regularly participate in the government within the, within the districts, and those representatives who play a major key role in, in, uh, uh, in the, how that information flows from, from executive down to legislative, down to the districts, down to the communities, and uh, so we feel that that the most important thing is, is communication working together as well. Uh, that seems to be really a lack of, uh, uh, a, a really lacking as far as our all Sorry, Mr. Lopez, I have to go into our next candidate. Um, next candidate to answer this question is uh, candidate Juan Saunders. Of government, how will you make it part of your administration and what 
processes we use to address and prioritize tribal members' concerns? Thank you for the question. Uh, first of all, good evening to everybody. Um, you know, I, I think we have to go back and look at our history as a people, our history as autumn, and, and recognize that, you know, yes, we have a constitution. We have a, a constitution we adopted in the, in the 1930s, and we have a new constitution we adopted in 1986. But even before these constitutions were established, we already had some form of governmental structure. And many of the, the decisions that were made by the then leadership was really a decision by consensus, a decision by bringing people together and making those kind of, the kinds of decisions that were going to be most effective for the people that, were going to, that we were going to apply those decisions to. And then even if you look at the 1986 Constitution, you know, you cite the preamble of the Constitution in your, in your program here. In there, you know, it's clear that it says that the Constitution is to establish a responsive form of government. And even if you look further in the Constitution, the Constitution lets us know that the, the, the leadership gains their, or, or establishes its authority by the people that they are, that put them in office and that the people themselves need to be given an opportunity to have some level of, of input in how the, how the government is going, is going to be run or how the government is going to operate or how the government is going to, uh, to provide services to the people. So I think that the, the idea of bringing consensus, the idea of, of working together with uh, the districts and working together with the legislative council is critically important to our ability to make the kinds of decisions that we need to make in order to apply those decisions to the people that, are, that we're governing. And so I think that if we look at the Constitution again, the Constitution is pretty, is pretty uh, uh, clear on how the government is structured. All right, thank you. Our second question is, how will you increase transparency concerning the tribal government's activities and spending behavior so that members of the nation may have a better understanding of how the nation's assets are being used? And this question will go first to candidate Juan Saunders. During uh, my first administration, I scheduled uh, frequent updates to districts to provide for them financial information where the, dis the districts and the nation uh, in terms of the programs, branches, and a comprehensive view of our finances. I also scheduled a financial summit at Desert Diamond Casino in 2007 to look at trends, where our resources are coming from, where we, we've spent our resources. And it's important now that we are in a, um, a situation now with the economy that we have to really evaluate how we spend our revenue in order to safeguard for the future so we don't end up in a deficit. We need to make decisions in terms of uh, curbing our spending, uh, less travel, do more conference calling, use Skype, uh, use um, technology to communicate with state and federal officials. We also need to um, trim the fat in our budgets. We also need to ensure that uh, we don't lay people off or we, we continue to provide service delivered to the people, but we also need to ensure that decisions that we make, we should have made in 2008, when we knew that our revenues were uh, decreasing, um, because the situation that we're in right now in 2011 isn't good for the whole North Nation and our financial future. We have to start now, unfortunately, we're gonna to have to take some critical steps now to continue to trend. It has to be an effort we're all in this together. It's not just one branch, uh, districts, or enterprises, or programs of the nation. It has to be a comprehensive approach until the, the economy uh, starts to improve, which it is. In 2011, we're seeing an increase in trends with uh, international markets and markets here in the United States. And But we, it doesn't mean that we should continue to spend as we are. I know that some of the uh, casino employees were taking a 10% cut in pay. They were also cutting back their hours and the nation Sorry. was um, The question will go next to uh, Chairman Norris. Thank you. You know, I, I think we have to really understand what we mean when we talk about transparency. 
transparency. I think that to certain individuals, transparency probably has different different meanings or different uh, definitions of what we're talking about. Again, going back to the constitution that governs this nation, uh, you know, it's pretty clear there that the people, the, the, the leadership is has the responsibility and the obligation to make sure that whatever decisions they're making is decisions that are going to benefit the people of this nation. And uh, when we talk about transparency, transparency is really in all facets of what we do as, as a government, whether it's financial condition, whether it's uh, uh, decisions that are made by, by, uh, by the legislative council or by, by the leadership. I think it's also, uh, people have also uh, their own understanding of, of, or a different understanding of what it means when, when the leadership goes into executive session. Nobody likes executive sessions. Nobody likes the fact that, that issues are being discussed behind closed doors. But one of the things that people really need to understand about the need to go into executive sessions is that most of those decisions uh, or decisions to go into executive session are involving uh, discussions that need to be held with the leadership that would really uh, set direction or set the, uh, uh, how we're going to address a certain things. Maybe it's legal strategy, maybe it's a, a public relations strategy, maybe it's a, uh, you know, those kinds of issues that really need to be discussed in much more detail with the leadership. I know that decisions of the council and decisions that are made are never made in closed doors. All decisions of the council have been in open, in open door policy. I think those are the kinds of, of transparencies that, that we need to ensure and we need to make sure we incorporate in, 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 in our, our, our administration regardless of who's in office. Candidate Lopez? The mention of uh, open door policy um, for many of the past candidates, as, as, as I was in, uh, as I recall it, um, the uh, editor, premier, previous uh, chair at Romano had an open door policy, and which I feel is, um, is something that the, that the people need, but also as far as our spending and budget, as you know, that um, next year is going to be a new election. And we don't know uh, what's going to happen there uh, as far as the control of the Senate and the House by the Republicans. And certainly those discretionary monies, the monies that are set aside for IHS or um, BIA, we don't know what's going to happen with those money. So we have to have some control over those dollars. We have to have some control over those, those kinds of spendings, inventory control. Uh, there's a lot of waste uh, that I understand um, in a number of these programs, uh, overspending, uh, fuel, um, the high cost of fuel, the wars uh, that are now happening uh, across, and, uh, but certainly the, the, the people do have to know, and that's the question as far as, uh, uh, as how we spend our money and where it's going. People are always wondering, well, where, where's all this money? And, uh, and so we need to, right now, uh, look at those things that are happening within our, with our economy. And certainly, yes, we have to continue to employ our awesome workers, but again, but we have to look at what's happening in those counties, Pima County, Pinal County, Maricopa County, and, and those people that are living there that have, that have lost their homes, and you know, we take it for granted that you know, we don't have to pay for mortgages, we don't have to pay for, for uh, uh, medicine and all these things. But we have to look at ourselves too, that how the economy is going to affect us. And also we have to start, like I said, start looking at our spending and uh, 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 having some kind of um, a loss prevention uh, program or, or a control. I don't know if that is in place right now, but certainly um, this is the kind of uh, administration that we're going to be looking at is, is to really look at those. Our next question is, um, recently the federal government avoided a government shutdown by making major budget and program cuts, which may have an impact on the nation. With this in mind and costs increasing, how would you control excessive and unnecessary spending and abuse of resources within our tribal government and reform our government to make it more effective and efficient? And this question goes first to Chairman Norris. Thank you. You know, there was a period of time 
in the history of our tribal government where the uh, nation and other tribes would go to the federal government and ask for special appropriations to do projects. I think that, or to fund projects. As we heard the President of the United States say recently in his speech to the nation address, that he would veto any bill that came to him with a special appropriation in it. I think we heard that from John McCain as he was also running for president. And he called it pork barrel spending. So we have to understand the fact that our ability to ask the, 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 the United States government to appropriate pro, uh, monies for specific projects that we want to do have pretty much gone away. So what's critically important for us is to be able to have a, a very good understanding and working knowledge and working relationship with, with continuously with the government, but also to see if we might be able to get those, those governmental entities to set aside some funding available for tribes. In addition to that, you know, we have to make sure that what we've been able to do, and, and I can stand here and I tell you, that we have consistently, for the last three fiscal years, decreased our tribal budget. We have continuously looked at the tribal budget and looked at where some of that fat is in the budget, and have continuously told our directors, you are going to be X percent less of whatever your budget was the previous year. Or if you're not going to be pro uh, providing the, 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 the services that you've outlined in your, in your program, abstract or your program descriptions, then your funding is going to be based on how active your, your program is to, to providing those services. So we've always got to figure out a way that we might be able to, uh, to decrease the, 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 the fat that we have, that we know we have in the budget. Um, candidate Lopez? Can you repeat the question? Recently, the federal government avoided a government shutdown by making major budget and program cuts, which may have an impact on the nation. With this in mind and costs increasing, how would you control excessive and unnecessary spending and abuse of resources within our tribal government and reform our government to make it more effective and efficient? Certainly, this has always been a problem since we've uh, come into gaming as far as the, uh, how we spend our monies, the, the control of our dollars, how we manage our dollars from, from executive on down to, uh, to uh, the districts, communities, and that and um, uh, the wants and the needs of the often. And, uh, and certainly there have been, uh, sadly to say, there have been, been, been some uh, uh, criminal acts that have been involved or felony acts that have been involved in relation to these dollars. And uh, so there has to be something, as I mentioned before, having some kind of uh, control or some kind of security as far as these uh, dollars that are going to these programs, some kind of accountability which would, which would uh, Again, go with the uh, whoever the director is, the manager, whoever's taking care of the dollars. But it's uh, those are the key people, and uh, those those that have uh, the in the districts. You have your 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 um, uh, your committees, your budget committees that control those dollars as well. I have are knowing what they're what they're looking at, and knowing how to identify those kinds of errors, or if there is in fact some kind of uh, of embezzling them in, in, in their district, then they should be able to recognize it. Uh, and also, just as well, they just go to it. All there has been some programs or workshops that's been set up by the nation to provide that kind of assistance in having that kind of uh, control over theft. But certainly, I feel that um, uh, there's there's a lot of dollars that are flowing around, but there's there's poor management. There's no there's 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 we have a lot of autumn with the, with degrees with accounting degrees, but. Um, but sometimes I feel that those are those often are are, are they, we say this in the school they come back and there's no jobs and so I feel that those often who have county degree should be able to come and, and work for the nation and, and and establish themselves and having and saying what kind of kind of what what they can offer and how, how we can best manage our money and certainly it is going to affect us uh, later in the years as this the uh, thank you. Candidate Juan Saunders. Thank you. The uh, cuts in the federal budget may not affect the Thon Automation. It will affect the Thon Automation. $32 billion in federal cuts, the Bureau of Indian Affairs, the 
the Indian Health Service, our, some of the uh, federal programs that operate here on the nation, the IHS is uh, operating under a uh, continuing uh, resolution, receiving their funds in increments. We all know how critical health care is in the nation. State of Arizona has a deficit as well. And they um, approach that by reducing services to the poor in the state of Arizona. Uh, they're going to um, reduce or um, take away access funding, which is a low income um, medical insurance. Uh, 500 of them will be impacted. Uh, two to three million dollars that IHS relies on to help pay for the service delivery. Uh, bills of our, our nation's members. I shared earlier that um, casino employees were uh, requested to uh, cut their salary by 10% and cut their uh, number of working hours um, because they knew that uh, revenue was um, slowing down. But the nation continued to spend. We weren't taking appropriate steps to um, curb spending. And we've heard the leadership say that since 2008, the Legislative Council and the Executive Office have been monitoring the, the steady decline in our revenue, 2008 until 2011. And now the 2012 uh, nation's budget, they're now trying to take appropriate steps to um, address a $7 million deficit of the Thong of the nation. Had those steps been taken in 2008, when um, the, the, the nation observed the decline in revenue, we won't be where we are today. And um, we have to ensure that the service delivery to our people is not affected. We need to communicate to them the status of the um, economy and how it impacts the Tawana the nation. And we're just not getting that information throughout the campaign during some of these um, presentations. Our, our next question is, although the nation has oversight committees, concerns still loom around program services. Not to say that all are underperforming, some do a great job and may need more funding and support. But how would your administration mandate and enforce oversight of tribal departments and programs to ensure that the needs of tribal members are being met and that these programs are performing adequately? And this question will go first to um, candidate Wong's honors. First of all, I like, would like to acknowledge all the employees of the Dawn of the Nation for your diligence and your effort in the jobs that you do. Because it's all about service delivery to the members of the nation. Throughout this campaign, we've heard uh, from the people and have offered recommendations of how to improve service delivery. First of all, I want to say that all of the directors that work for the uh, nation's departments report directly to the chairman of the Thong of the Nation and the vice chair of the Thong of the Nation. It's incumbent upon the chair and the vice chair to give the director guidance and direction so they can communicate that to the managers, down to the employees. But we have to set the example first as employees. We have to ensure that if we're going to um, request that they curb spending, that we curb spending as well in our own office. I also want to say that uh, the Constitution of the Tono of the Nation requires the Chairman of the Nation to present to the Legislative Council an administrative plan of their goals for uh, the four years that they'll be in office. And those goals and the administrative plan is what the programs will um, use to provide and to strengthen service delivery. So whatever those priorities are for each administration, will affect the programs. For example, um, education is uh, important to our administration, the Juan Saunders and Garcia. We uh, want to focus time on kindergarten to 12th grade to give them resources, support, uh, revenue to help improve the uh, drop uh, graduation rates and to uh, curb our dropout rates. We also need to uh, assume the management of the uh, Bureau of Indian Affairs and Roads Department. And we've never invested our own money into uh, roads. Uh, we rely on the Bureau of Indian Affairs and their, their federal program, and their funds are being reduced like um, the uh, Indian Health Service. This 
question goes next to Candidate Lopez. Although the nation has oversight committees, concerns still loom around program services. Not to say that all are underperforming, some do a great job and may need more funding and support. How would your administration mandate and enforce oversight of tribal departments and programs to ensure that the needs of tribal members are being met and that these programs are performing adequately? The key to any, any organization or any of these programs that would work is the, the leadership. And the leadership, as it was mentioned, goes down to the directors, managers, supervisors, and employees. And what we've heard out there, going out to the people, there seems to be still a lack of service, still a lack of uh, uh, information. And so what does that say? Um, it points to the leadership, as it was mentioned. And so uh, accountability, as I mentioned before, is, is important. it's important to apply this because it, it has some some accountability to those dollars that are provided to those programs and to ensure that it is working uh, what it is meant to be. And for the autumn. <laughs> Kita <laughs> Here, next question is, 
Innovation and investing in new technologies is key in the current and future economy. How will you make decisions to ensure a strong economic base for the immediate future, including adequate distri distribution of funds and advance the nation without losing our traditions and culture? This question goes first to candidate Lewis. Um, there is a lot of opportunities out there for the nation. There is a lot of financial dollars that we can use. Uh, but unfortunately, um, the, our strength and some of our weakness uh, and even some of our threats um, come into play. Um, I have seen uh, businesses fail in the nation because of our um, hostility to development. We, have, we are our worst enemy in starting our own businesses. And yes, I have dreams for that we diversify as far as uh, other businesses to bring in more revenue. But again, it goes back to the management. And the key to making these businesses successful for to venture in new areas of the economy and creating other, other uh, sources of revenue for the nation. But in order to do that, we must have the, the students, those key people who are going to run our businesses, but yet when we send our kids to go to school and they come back with degrees, there is nothing here. And it up to two and, and that and there are examples of that. But there are key threats and, and also weaknesses that we definitely have to work on as all of them must be all of them. And uh, you've seen that. I mean I hate to say that, but I have some dreams that one day that we will be uh our government and provide more dollars and and because of the Bolachu, look your cook here, casino, that's all the two. Now, is there a plan right now being produced if all of a sudden those dollars are depleted, that the government cuts it off, IHS, BIA, what are we gonna do? Is there a plan now? Mr. Norris? Repeat the question, please. Innovation and investing in new technologies is key in the current and future economy. How will you make decisions to ensure a strong economic base for the immediate future, including adequate distribu distribution of funds, and advance the nation without losing our traditions and culture? You know, one of the things that uh, when we came into office that was pretty evident was the antiquated uh, ability to, to incorporate certain technology um, into just something as simple as our, our, um, our uh, the people that are on the network within the nation. You know, there were things that we were asking the Department of Information and Technology to do, and they were doing the best they can with what we've been asking them to do as far as bringing in certain kinds of technology. Something as simple as video conferencing. Um, but the problem was that our, our current technology at that time was inadequate, was inadequate. And so what we did is we, we, we identified this, we, we, we worked with the Department of Information Technology, we asked them, what is it exactly that you need in order to bring us the level of technology that, that we need to be able to move forward? And uh, they identified what those social stock sources, what those needs were. And so we went ahead and we met with the Legislative Council and the Oversight Committees and said, we're going to need some appropriations to bring our current uh, 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 form of technology up to, up to standard. Um, and so, so we were able to do that. We were able to bring that, 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 that system, that antiquated system that we had into a much more modern system so that way it had the ability to, to, to do the kinds of things we were asking it to do as far as technology is concerned. One of the other things as simple as how we do budgets. You know, for, for years the council would receive their budgets and roll, you know, thick about three or four, three ring binders about this thick and it would be paper and paper and paper and paper of budgets. So one of the things that we proposed to the council was that why don't we go ahead and, 
and, and get rid of the paper. You all have laptops. Bring your laptops, and we're going to put the put the budgets on on a disc on that on a memory card. And it won't sometimes. Today, if any uh, of us adults have problems with any technical items, TV, uh, DVD, cell phones, we give it to our kids to fix and to set it up. Our kids love technology, and um, many of them are interested in that field. I think that's something that we need to support, and it's, it's a way to uh, bring them into the nation to help us set up um, what technology we need. Um, uh, the Don Alton Utility Authority just recently received $70 million to put broadband um, into um, the, the, the filters into the ground to bring broadband to some of the most remote, remote communities on the nation. When we do that, it allows economic development to occur, it allows uh, education to reach out to the most remote communities uh, of our nation. It also help, helps to encourage the entrepreneurial spirit. Look at our people selling food um, here in the capital or throughout the nation. Look at the signs on doors that, that uh, people are selling uh, food from their homes. We even see the Schwanz man driving around the nation. I was at the Piston Mall community meeting and there goes the Schwanz truck in the village. They know that in order to sell their product, they have to go to the communities, to where the people are. And that's what some of our Altham are doing today. And we need to encourage them and, and continue to support our Altham businesses here on the nation. You see our, our um, colorful um, pamphlets that we distributed. That was designed by a young Altham man. And we printed that card from asset printing because we want to utilize our local uh, businesses that uh, belong to the Alta, and we, we, we support uh, businesses by buying from them. Price of gas is high, but these are Alta uh, business owners, uh, districts who have stores and, and uh, gas for sale. I also want to say that uh, economic development, our plan is to bring together Alta business owners, Alta experts. Um, I guess a part of the question that um, wasn't answered would, I guess how to rephrase it, is um, how would you use technology um, as far as helping us keep our traditions and culture? And I'll just go in the order that was already presented, Candidate Lopez. Uh, yes, one of the, one of the, it was one of the resources and technology that we have today. And of course, there's a lot of educational um, tools out there in using our computers. And we just use, and it, and it's worked out there. Uh, there was a teacher out here that used that kind of tool. And it works. Unfortunately, it no longer works in our school system. But it did, in fact, work. And I'd like to get a hold of him again and, and to see, because the kid, he said the kids really took to this. And so this needs to be introduced into our school system. Not just our school system, but throughout the districts, throughout the, the Head Start programs, because at that at that age, you know, you need to capture their attention. You need to you need to give that opportunity for, to those kids, and not just not just the kids, but also the parents themselves, and perhaps we'll we'll latch on to this as well. And because this is the the wave of the future, this is where we're headed. This is our future. These are our kids. So we need to use that, and also as well as communication, using that throughout the nation, interlinking the nation, as far as uh, more uh, the gas prices, um, uh, updating our, 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 our website, and also in, in, uh, in communicating that way, um, providing documents through the internet, all these things that can be done with the use of this type of technology, but, uh, but it has not been addressed as of today, yet it's there. And the kids, as, you, as somebody said, the kids are using it. They're, they, they, you know, they, they, it's easy for them because we're, as all of them, our kids are artistic, and they have that ability. They have that gift already to know how to do it. So, and and, and so, like I said, this is this is how we can use it and incorporate that as far as even our autumn, autumn language and using that as, as it is right now and using that and, and providing that kind of educational. Uh, 
background for our kids that they can use here or off the nation and work anywhere as far as using that kind of technology. So, um, yeah, it's, it's the greatest resource that I believe that is it's a tap to right now. It's not being addressed and, and it's something, um, I guess, uh, uh, used right now. And, and um, uh, in our school system, and I know there's been some laptops that's, that has been provided there in our school system for some of our gifted kids. And, uh, and they, then they're excited about it. So. Um, Chairman Norris. Thank you. You know, and as I'm thinking about, by your question, I'm thinking about the things that we have been able to produce uh, in relationship to our campaign. You know, there are all of them out there that have gone to graphics, computer graphics design school that have accomplished pretty significantly with their ability to produce the kinds of products that that you're asking them to produce. Um, and you know, the, in, just for example, uh, Tony Johnson. Tony Johnson is, is the person that has designed all the materials that we, we're using in our campaign this evening. Yet, even though he's use, using technology as, the, as, as an ability to, to, to produce the kinds of things that we're doing, He's also incorporated the ability to bring the awfulness into what he's producing. And so if we're going to continue to be able to incorporate or make sure that we try to ensure that we incorporate our, our, our awfulness in whatever it is that we're going to produce, you know, people need to, to have the understanding or the ability to, to not, not just work the computer and create the designs, but have the ability to write the kinds of programs that are necessary in order to accomplish some of the things that we want to accomplish. As we write the author language, you know, as we, there are certain symbols and certain ways that certain letters are written that would define how an author word is written. Yet, maybe there's not any program out there that has the ability to do that. And so, one of the ways that we can do this is make sure that not only are we teaching our are all of them the ability to become techno technologically savvy, but also that they have the, the, the they know that there's an opportunity for them to, to, to get into the business or that kind of a business in learning how to program the kinds of, 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 of data or the kinds of uh, services that need to be used to be able to write the kinds of language our language and on the computer and so on. Um, Candidate Bill Summers? One of the, uh, you know, the, uh, the ways to do that is uh, for our small children and children in general, um, studies have uh, proven that uh, birth to five years of age is the best time to teach children. That's the age when their brains are developing and they can retain and they'll capture any language that you teach them. Not just uh, English, but all of them, and any language. And uh, many families um, may not speak of them, but if we can use technology to, to develop a curricula where children can hear the language through um, uh, programs that we develop, um, they can use the computers because you have to hear the language in order to, to learn the language. And if someone in the home does not speak, then they can use the technology to actually hear through the programs that are developed. Um, the other is the uh, Don Autumn Nation uh, curricula uh, to, to use to teach uh, uh, children in school about math, science, geology, botany, um, using what we have in our own backyard. And I, I really feel that technology can help us uh, to utilize um, technology to create a curriculum that we can uh, use in um, computer learning labs in the schools, but also through Thong Mountain Community College, they're an excellent resource. Um, Delma Garcia and I have also uh, shared with the people that we would like to um, um, complete the Thong Mountain uh, Dictionary Project. Um, I understand there's a draft of this document in the Benito Garcia Library, and people um, need to really um, make a commitment to complete that project, and we can also use technology um, with the completion of this uh, Thong Ong Dictionary Project. 
Um, technology for the elders is still something new that they're learning. And for many of the elders, they want to have face-to-face -face contact. You have to develop trust with them first before you put a microphone in their face. Thank you. Thank you. Um, our next question is the Economic Development Plan of the Tono of the Nation titled Invest in the People, Invest in the Future, enacted on January 4, 2000 by Resolution 2000-11, stated that the nation was required to create an economic development plan. Beyond the Community Development Financial Institute and the economic development program that already exists, what are your plans to move the nation into the future and create the jobs and industries of tomorrow? This question will go first to um, Chairman Norris. Thank you. You know, when we when we look at the idea of economic development, you know, there are, there are several things that we have to take into consideration in in being able to work towards bringing the kinds of economic development ideas or projects that will create job opportunity for for our nation's members. As has been mentioned before, you know, we we, we pretty much rely on the gaming industry as our primary source of income for the nation. And yes, I agree, we need to be able to diversify whatever econ economic opportunities we have and not rely solely on, on gaming as that revenue source. But, you know, it's not something as simple as just bringing businesses out to the nation or creating the kinds of business. There's a lot of things that need to be taken into consideration such as whether or not whatever your product is, that you're going to have the you're going to have the market available to you in order to uh, to sell whatever product that you're going to produce. One of the other things that we think about is you know we can negotiate with with different entities to see if they might be able to bring their their warehouse or their their production plants or whatever the case may be out here. But one of the things that are going to impact our ability to do that is our ability to have a a, a land use plan, uh, an a, a a nationwide land use plan that would give us uh, a clear understanding of what the land layout looks like in order for us to determine what kinds of infrastructures is necessary, whether or not there's infrastructure that might become available if we're going to bring those companies out. And the other things that we need to think about is, you know, we have to think about our location. In business, location is everything. Now, are we going to be able to entice businesses to come out to the nation and set up their, their whatever their, their products are and sell their, their products or hire off them in order to be able to, to produce the products that they have? I think that we need to, to think about how, how we're going to accomplish that with um, uh, a lot of other questions that need to be asked and answered. All right, thank you. Um, I, we need to interrupt our debate for a KOHN station break. This question is going to go next to candidate Juan Saunders. Would you like me to repeat the question? Yes. The Economic Development Plan of the Thana the Nation title, Invest in the People, Invest in the Future, enacted on January 4, 2000, a resolution 2000-11, stated that the nation was required to create an economic development plan beyond the Community Development Financial Institute and the economic development program that already exists. What are your plans to move the nation into the future and create the jobs and industries of tomorrow? Dama Garcia and I have uh, shared with the people that we would like to assume management of the Bureau of Indian Affairs Roads Department to invest our own money into roads as well as housing, because BIA and the Donald the King Association currently operate on federal funds. And we know that the federal funding at the national level is being reduced. When we invest our own money into roads and housing, we can determine what the eligibility will be, and we can determine who and what types of homes to build. Along with that are apprenticeship programs that we would like to create to provide jobs to our autumn for roads and for housing. Uh, we uh, have many of our autumn who uh, tra attend trade school. We have Donald the Community College who has uh, 
um, a vocational trades uh, program as well. But in order to um, reinvest um, our resources back to our people, we need to support our, all of them who, um, who go out to earn these trades, and that's how we propose to um, provide apprenticeship for uh, the two beats that the autumn have said they, they, they want. Uh, in terms of uh, economic development, um, we, our plan is to bring together all the uh, business owners, all the experts to have a, a thorough discussion about what kinds of economic development do we want on our nation? What don't we want? To have a discussion with the districts to ask what do you not want on the Thorn Alta Nation? We have heard people say they don't want to see any more mining, they don't want to see um, power lines that desecrate uh, sacred sites. So what kinds of economic development do we want here on our nation? And we haven't had that comprehensive discussion as a nation. The nation receives so many um, proposals to bring business to the nation. We have a Bureau of Indian Affairs process that is very likely to do assessments. Thank you. Candidate Lopez. As, as I mentioned before, one of the key things is for, to invest in our people and invest in the future for, for our nation is, is and, it's, and I know this is uh, something that we've done already, but I've never seen an assessment done as far as economic development and, you, and the use of our, our dollars and uh, where it's going to be spent as far as economic development. As far as what has been mentioned, you know, the roads and, and housing and all these other things that has been uh, talked about for years, but as far as the future, and that's a, that is a great concern of mine because I feel that the casino will, the casino thing will last forever. So we have to start looking at uh, and assessing where our strengths are, um, the, our capabilities, you know, our strengths, some of our capabilities, the, our, the management, the key to uh, making anything work as far as businesses, uh, the resources, the people, um, uh, the kids that we send off to educate and come back. And, and we have to start thinking of those things and utilizing what are our weaknesses. Um, uh, the lack of, uh, I mean, it's, it's the threats, the, the threat is always there. If anybody, if you ever threat, anybody starts any kind of business, there's always threat of uh, some political entity involvement, uh, legislative, and the environment is a, is a concern as well. How much water do we got to, if we were to start any business, um, would that sustain that, that business venture? Uh, Solar energy, the technology for the future, we have to really tap into. That is the source of economic venture. But again, it goes back to how we're going to strategize to make this work. If we put 10 people together, will they be able to work together and succeed to, to run this business? And, and so, but that still concerns me because we still have yet to learn, uh, learn to work together. And so, this is our vision is that, yeah, that we. we not just rely on Our next question is, our K-12 school systems are under the governance of the Arizona Department of Education, which is the state, and the Bureau of Indian Affairs, the federal government, 